Now, I am by no means suggesting you go look at pornographic material. Hello everyone, I'm Taylor Bambico. I'm a self-published author of Young Adult and Adult, and today's video is five topics for authors looking to venture into erotica. Now before we get started, this video may contain some sexual content that might make you feel uncomfortable. If so, leave now. I'll just link this video here for you instead. It's not even the least bit sexual. So with that little disclaimer, let's get started, shall we? Number one, establish a story. Well, first you need to establish whether or not your story is appropriate to feature such explicit sexual content that erotica is known for. It should be obvious, but the sex in this type of work is very descriptive. What? I didn't know. How could I have known? I wanted maximum penetration. Sure, I'm not saying there can't be sex in a young adult novel, but it will not be to the extent that is found in adult novels. Number two, develop characters. And what I mean by that is it would be unbelievable if your story features a male or female character who is inexperienced and then when it's go time all of a sudden they're the best their character has ever had. Not really believable at all. As an example, in Silent Rage, Jedrick and Lily are new to the BDSM scene and they learn off each other as the novel progresses. And not just to the lifestyle of BDSM, both Jedrick and Lily are sexually inexperienced. So as I said several seconds ago, it'd be very unbelievable for Jedrick, who has never had sex, and Lily, who's never had sex, to both be excellent. And so that leads on to number three, research. Now, I am by no means suggesting you go look at pornographic material. I mean, you can, however, using pornographic material as your main source of information is equivalent to using Hollywood as your main source of information for using firearms throughout your books. I mean, someone who actually knows what they're doing is gonna tell that you didn't do any research. Since I already brought up Silent Rage, we'll just use BDSM as a reference. The BDSM lifestyle, for instance, has many aspects. For instance, establishing your role in that lifestyle. There are dominant and submissive relationships, top and bottoms, master and slave relationships, or mistress and slaves. Then of course, there are individuals known as switches. And basically what that means is in their relationship, there are gonna be times where they're going to be either dominant or they're gonna be submissive. Another very important aspect are limits. So in my own research, I discovered there are actually three types. The first being what is known as a must limit. Basically, a must limit is something the submissive wants in a scene. And that can be something as simple as role play. Then of course, there are soft limits. So a soft limit is something that the submissive is open to, but they might be a little bit nervous, they're not really sure if they want to do it just yet, and it's not really required in that scene. An example of that could be something like wax or whips or something that they might be open to, as I said, but really are not sure at this time. It really could be anything. Then of course, there are hard limits. So a hard limit is something that the submissive does not want to do at all. A great example of this could be something involving fire. No, it's not. One more thing to take into account is safe words. So safe words are used as communication to the dominant or mistress or master throughout a scene just to make sure everything is going smooth. So as examples, we'll just use the colors green, yellow, and red. In this case, green would mean keep going, yellow would mean something's up, I need you to dial it back a bit, and red would be, I need you to stop everything right now. Again, that all boils down to what you want to use in your work, I just use those three colors because it's something everyone can picture. Now for some people that might be a lot of information to take in, but if you're writing a book then you already know you're going to be overloaded at times with just an immense amount of information coming at you. Number four, get involved with other erotic authors. Twitter is what I recommend, that's just where I've met a lot of other erotic authors and you can have a lot of fun on there with them. For instance, about three weeks ago, I was involved in one of these threads with many authors and it was an awful lot of fun, to be honest. Topics ranged from sci-fi erotica involving robots, believe it or not, uh, from perspectives of both male and female authors. Me? No, I was just in the comments for that one. The more serious issue of abuse disguises erotica also came up and yeah, that was very interesting to read through. I don't agree with that type of material, but again, I can't tell someone else what they can and can't do. And number five, am I gonna use my real name or am I gonna use a pen name? That particular topic came up as well. A lot of people there are using pseudonyms, whereas me, I'm using my actual name. And that's something I'm fortunate to say I can do. I mean, Silent Rage is my work, that's my name on there, and yes, I did write those relatively explicit sexual scenes. From what I found, a lot of people do write under pen names merely because they might write something that they are fear being judged for, or they might live somewhere where it's just frowned upon, I guess, or they might use a pen name to hide their gender as well. Believe it or not, there are quite a few male authors who write under a female name just to write erotica. 
Another aspect is maybe their job might hinder them from writing explicit sexual content. That company might have reservations to working with someone who writes sexual explicit content. In all honesty, that's really up to you if you want to use your real name or a pen name. I mean, as I said, I'm just one of the lucky ones who gets to write under his real name. Anyway, these are the five tips I have for authors who are looking to get involved with writing erotica. Trust me, it is a lot of fun. It's definitely different than just writing thriller. I mean, I like writing thriller, but sometimes adding sexual content can really just change up the day for you. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider subscribing. Click on that bell icon so you're notified when I upload new content. Leave your comments in the section below. I do enjoy reading those, and have a good day. See ya!